first, uh, congratulations on a terrific piece of work. I had a chance to be one of the peer reviewers and see it early and, and some great stuff in there. But also a, a bit of a plea of how to make sure it doesn't get twisted the wrong way by Andy's wonderful pro uh, profession. Um, <laughs> and, and, um, we, we should, uh, because the, the press has tended to like to make this play of, oh, it's all about a technology solution, or it's all about moral responsibility in our individual action, uh, or it's all about government regulation, or it's all about kind of more bottom up. And uh, just to be clear, uh, one uh, billion tons, one gigaton is a lot. But we need to uh, reduce 14, 14 gigatons by 2020. So this is 1 14th of what we need by, uh, by 2020. So we should just put that in perspective. We can make a real difference, but we really got to do all the other stuff. So it's an and, not an or. And it should right. always, that point should always be made. Like the right. first step, it should be called the right. first step of right. easy. Right, and, and, you know, and we should also acknowledge, again, the co-benefits point, uh, cost savings, better health, and also more engaged uh, people uh, who are also voters on this issue. So by getting this wedge, it helps us get the other wedge. So can, can I, I think that thing? more engaged is a really important element. Uh, again, as I'm sure almost everyone here has probably experienced, when we put panels on our house, uh, my, my, uh, my kids started calling my wife the eco-grinch because she was always making sure, you know, turning the thermostat down yet another degree and turning off lights even when we're in the room. Uh, and so as you, do, as you do this, you become more aware, and then you really start thinking, so if I'm doing all this, why the heck is our Senate sitting on their hands and being such a bunch, uh, well, not taking action on the yeah, one thing. You know, I was also peer reviewed. I thought the and thank you both for your assistance yeah, in the project. It's fantastic. The work was impeccable. And congratulations to them. It was really good work. Uh, the question I have is not about the excellence of the work, but really about the reporting out to the people who use it. And two things. One is, I mean, it's important to emphasize. Yes, it is one fourteenth, but it's one fourteenth of four percent of the world doing that. Right. One fourteenth. So that's actually a big contribution because yeah. it's coming from America, not the whole world. Uh, but just like you said about, I put in, when I put in solar panels, it's exactly the same thing. There's just no light goes left on. I mean, it's just boom, boom, boom. You know, people coming up to try to find me. I don't live on a, a street with uh, lights, and so, you know, <laughs> fall down, they fall down in the dark. <laughs> Bring a flashlight. I mean, <laughs> uh, so, the, but the same thing occurs to us uh, as, uh, as, a, as a group, which is all the conservation measures that have been uh, practiced here to Ford are not measured. They're not, there's no way to see them cumulatively exist. Uh, we see the emissions, but we don't see the savings. You know. uh, what you do, what I do, isn't registered somewhere, okay, is what I'm saying. So is there some way you know, that attached to this can be a, a way so America has a way to start banking its savings so we can actually see what we're doing. So this wedge actually wedges up <laughs> visually and, and statistically. You should call on David. All right, apparently I should call on David. <laughs> well, I'm asking you. Okay. Oh, you want to ask him question? because I think David wants no, to ask you. I say something to you, Peter, and then I want to do something to these questions. Firstly, you have made my life much easier <laughs> and all of our lives, so I thank you for this incredible yeah. piece of work. We've been spending many decades working on this issue, and so we've got a lot of knowledge that could be helpful. But one of the things that we've done in all the cities we work in is we build a feedback system that shows the drops filling the bucket. Mm -hmm. And it's a very powerful part of the behavioral change mechanism. And I think that it's a key part of our work collectively here if we're going to be able to make an intervention like this. And the second thing I want to say is, to your point on synergy, um, You've actually taken, you've made this a lot uh, more, a lot less demanding. Or, anyway, there's a lot more that I think you can get around synergy than you even described here. Because what we've found in all of our work is that people start to do the, the bar scale spending once they've done this kind of stuff. On average, people in our, in our program, if they are having the resources, and resources, spend $1,500 on hardcore solar, hardcore, you know, buying the Prius, buying whatever. So I mean, there's a whole other set of behavioral change opportunities here that you don't need to describe. So this may even be conservative. I, I, to be honest, we do think this is conservative. And again, we imposed upon ourselves constraints that this was really just behavioral. Uh, and there is some report work uh, by, I guess, Tony, people 
I mean, obviously have a crazy discount rate. They, they want a, a return of 40, 50 percent. So uh, that's why we, we took measures that weren't ones that were clearly economically rational. And, but I think you're right, and the hope is that if people do this, they will then start doing some measures that maybe require some investment, a little more work on their home, a little bigger change of their appliances or whatever else. Uh, and so it will build upon itself. So this is certainly conservative, but it's a first step. Uh, as, as to the earlier... It's conservative, by the way. It's fantastic. And I do get a lot more. Right. Um, as to the other question, I, I, I want to, I'm going to flip that and say, that's why we're here. That's part of the reason we're, we're talking about this here. We would love to figure out the feedback. You, you heard my answer to Jesse, the idea of these little thermometers all around the place. There's probably a lot better ideas of how to get the, uh, the concept, I like that phrase, the drops filling the bucket. Um, and so there is an understanding of the impact of what people are doing. So whether it be web graphics or other means, you know, community teams, or I, I don't know. That's what we're here for, to talk about. One more question. Amy, I guess. Thanks, Peter. Um, I was just going to say there was a lot of learning done by Walmart when they wanted to sell 100 million light bulbs. And uh, they actually reached out to utilities to track the data, right, the sales of the light bulbs, putting the light bulbs in, and then to try to track that and report back. And the challenges they have of getting the utilities to engage and give them that information. But now the utilities, because of the push around smart grid and the technologies have evolved and the groups like efficiency 2.0 and positive energy that are companies working with the utilities to provide this kind of feedback, I think there's some real opportunity to take the next level. Yahoo actually did a Yahoo map showing the uptake and the sales of those light bulbs so that people could compete in communities to see how many light bulbs were being sold and being installed. But again, there was a challenge with the technology and the data. But I think now, four years later, you're actually in a much better place. And just my final point, well, two things. Talk to Google Power Meter. We had them on a panel on carbon cutting for companies at Coffee Bean. and great. I think they're a good partner. Um, Near-term impact, I think, is what's missed if you do frame this in terms of 2020. And that's the huge benefit of the human right. behavior wedge. So just you can know, use that in projecting now. Right. And maybe we should make it to 2014, but and that is a great.